What's going on guys? Today we are going to be taking a look at how to use Nectar to give your vocals that autotune effect, that sound effect that is made famous by groups such as Daft Punk and solo artists like T-Pain, Cher, and other people like that. So to give a little background, uh, I did a couple vocal passes with a friend of mine. We did these vocal takes, uh, a couple of melodies, harmonies all mixed together, and, and we really liked the way they sounded, but the autotune effect kind of gave it that even cooler little edge to it. And I'm going to show you how we did it. So like I said, we did the couple of vocal passes. Let's go ahead and take a listen to them, see how they sound. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. So just sounds like a normal vocal take. Also a little preface. I did go through and I edited the timing just a little bit, tried to line everything up a little bit better than it was before. Uh, but it doesn't sound half bad, I think, but it could sound a little more interesting. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the Vox 1. Go ahead, solo that up, and we'll pull up our Nectar 3 plugin. So to start it, we'll bypass it, take the compressor off because we're not going to be using that, and let's listen to vocal 1 soloed. I don't know where we are. I don't know. Where you've been. Yeah, standard take, nice low line on it. So what we're gonna do, we'll go into the EQ first. Just give it a little bit of something. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. That cleans it up a little bit just to take out a little low end that we didn't want muddying it up. So we'll go ahead and go into the pitch correction. And here we'll go ahead and turn it on. So it's really important to know the key that you're working in specifically. Um, for this, we, we stuck very basic. We went with C major, but technically we're working in a minor key. So the relative minor of C major is A minor. So that's what we were working in. That's the key we're gonna go ahead and set for this. We're gonna go over here, put strength up all the way just to give it the, the power behind it to give you that auto-tune sound. We want, we want the full force of it coming at it. We'll turn off the format, because with the formatting, the whole purpose is to shift it up or down, give it a different scale sound. Don't want any of that. I want to focus on keeping it in the same scale with all that. We're going to turn down the speed as well. Eight milliseconds should be good. The speed is all about smoothing it, making it as smooth a transition as possible. And for the sound we're going for, it's gonna have a little bit of a jitter, a little bit of a, a jump whenever you hear it. So let's go ahead and listen to it without the correction again and then with. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. And with. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been one thing i did forget to mention is the vocal register so this vocal while it's fairly low for a female vocal pass uh this is still only in the mid-range of what a vocal would be relative to the scale of like a piano or, or a men's vocal take is a lot lower than this but it's important to get the correct vocal register because if you put it on the wrong one let's say we'll put it on high i don't know where we are, I don't know. You can see it's it's having trouble assigning it the correct notes because it's it's only looking within the certain range. So if it's a mid-range vocal with hitting the notes in the mid-range, it's going to be focusing on lining it up with those notes. If you select the wrong range, it's going to have a hard time selecting it. You're going to get weird pops. The wrong notes are going to be corrected into there, that sort of thing. One last thing I like to do whenever it comes to something like this is I go into the harmonies and I like to have the two unisons that are standard with it. This gives it almost not necessarily a chorus effect, but it it just makes it feel more full. So what I'll do is I'll go in here. I want the pitch correction all the way because I want them all to kind of be in unison, like we were saying before with the two unison passes. We're going to take the pitch variation out all the way. Again, we want them all to be the same pitch. And we're going to up the time variation to about 30%, just to add a little bit of difference in there. So we'll listen to it one more time with the pitch correction by itself, and then we'll listen with the harmonies in. I don't know where we are. And with the harmonies. I 
don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. Sounds pretty cool. So the way we can get that on every other track is shift alt if you're on Windows, shift option. I believe if you are on a Mac, click and drag over to each one. So now that we finished the first one, let's go ahead and move over to the second one. We'll take a listen real quick without the harmony. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. So the mid-range sounds like the correct option as well on this one. So let's take a listen with the harmonies in with all of our choices. Perfect. All right, we'll close out of that one. Switch over to Vox 3. Take off that. Take a look at the pitch here. I don't know where we are. I don't know. And let's see how it sounds on high, because there's a possibility it might be better on, on the high vocal register. I don't know where we are. I don't know. I think it sounded better on the mid, personally. There were a little less clicks and pops, and it felt like it was bending into the right places again. And let's take a listen with the harmony. I don't know where we are. I don't know. Perfect. I'm a huge fan of that. And then lastly, let's take a listen to the highest one. Now, the highest one, we only did her saying the I don't know portions. So let's just highlight that so that it can loop playing back on it real quick. Turn off the harmony for a split second. We got it soloed. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I really like that sound. It actually reminds me of the, the Portal video game, some of the, the turrets and however those voices were talking. All right, and let's turn on the harmony for it. All right, so let's go ahead, unsolo that, and let's see how they all sound together. We're gonna turn them off real quick, and we'll see how, just to remember how they sounded before, and then we'll try them with. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. And then turn all of the Nectar 3s back on, and we'll try it again. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. Listen to it one more time. I don't know where we are. I don't know where you've been. I really like that sound. It's almost like a synthesizer is kind of just playing her vocals for her. Well, that's it for using Nectar 3 to get an autotune effect on your vocals, guys. Thanks for checking this video out. If you'd like to learn more about Nectar 3, we have a Nectar 3 review as well as other amazing Isotope products available on audioassemble.com. The links will be down below in the description. And if you're looking to get your own version of this plugin, you can check out the links we have for Plugin Boutique as well as Splice. On Splice, you can get your free three-day trial of it. Just sign up for an account on Splice and you're all ready to go.